Perry of the circus. Jerry of the circus. Hello, Jerry. Oh, good morning, Uncle Dan. Hello, Rags, old fella. You're kind of glad to see me, too, aren't you? <laughs> sure he is. And I guess that goes for almost everybody with the circus. Oh, I did get a grand welcome. And it's good to be back, Jerry. Come on, sit down on the steps here. Huh, this is all you have to do? Uh-huh. Until matinee. Oh, that's right. You're a performer now. Say, where's Bumps? Well, I don't know. I haven't seen him since breakfast. I guess he's around in one of the other wagons visiting. Maybe with Slat and Hooligan. Why? Oh, no special reason. I was just wondering where he was. Uncle Dan. Yes, Jerry. Well, I guess it's none of my business, but, well... Come on, come on, out with it. What's on your mind? Well, I was just going to ask you if you're ever going back hunting wild animals. <laughs> Why did you hesitate asking me that? After all, Jerry, you and I are pretty close. We're the last of the Dugans, you know. Well, are you? You mean going back to the jungle? Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, I want to, Jerry. I want it very much. I've already sent some letters off to a few zoos asking them if they're in the market for any jungle beasts. You did? Yes, sir. Then as soon as you get some orders for lions and tigers and animals like that, you'll be starting off to Africa, huh? <laughs> well, there's a little bit more to it than that, Jerry. It's not quite that easy. Well, what else is there to do? You just got to pack up what you need and leave. I only wish it was that simple, Jerry. You know, taking an expedition into the jungle requires months of planning and preparation. Gee, it does, huh? Yes, sir. It's a big job. It's not like taking a train ride across the country. Oh, I know that. I suppose you have to buy certain things and take along and figure how long you're going to stay and everything. And that's it, exactly. That's what takes the time. But time is not the only factor. You must remember it takes plenty of money. Gee, I never thought of that. That should have been your first thought. The equipment, such as traps, ammunition, food supplies, and clothing, run into thousands of dollars, let alone the transportation costs, which amount to thousands more. Maybe you could get a loan from somebody if you promised to give them the money back when you sold the animals you brought back. Well, that's about the only thing I can do, Jerry. But the big problem is to find someone with enough money to go into a big deal of that. <laughs> no, Greg. Oh, it's, it's Bumps, Jerry. Oh, hi, you, Bumps. Well, hello there. Uh, where you been? Oh, just been over talking to Jim Bennett. You got to keep on friendly terms with the paymaster, you know. <laughs> How are you, Dan? Fine, Bumps, fine. <laughs> oh, and Rags, old boy, didn't mean to slight you. <laughs> well, how's it seem to be back, Dan? Just like coming home, Bumps. Yeah, that's the way I feel about the circus. About the only home I've ever known. What did Jim Bennett have to say? He usually has the latest news when anything is happening. Gee, now, I'm glad you reminded me. I heard something pretty fun. You did? Uh, what is it? Yeah, sit down and tell us about it. There's room for one more here on the steps. Uh, don't mind if I do. <laughs> when you get along to my age, sitting down's a lot better than standing. <laughs> Why, uh, <clears throat> it's about Patsy. Well, what about her? Well, you know, wait just a minute, Jerry, not so fast. It seems that she's come into some very fine luck. Mm, good for her. Yep, seems her godmother or some distant aunt or something, I didn't get it straight, but whoever it was, left Patsy a good-sized fortune. Why? Wow. Mm, yep, that's what Jim tells me. 
He said some fellow from some law firm got in touch with Patsy to make sure she was the right person. Well, that sounds like they mean business. Yep, she signed some papers and she said uh, to sign some more when we get to Harper City. Uh, well, that's where the law firm that's handling the case is located. Mm -hmm. We play Harper City pretty soon, don't we? Yeah, it's just a few more towns up the line. How much money will she get, Bumps? Well, Jim didn't seem to know that. As a matter of fact, the fella didn't tell Patsy exactly except that it amounted to several or many thousand dollars. Lucky girl. We'll have an heiress among us now. Yeah, she stays with the circus, but with all that money, it's hard to say what she'll do. Oh, I don't think Patch is the kind to let that go to her head. <laughs> Besides, she's very much like us. The circus is in her blood. Why, she wouldn't be happy anywhere else on Earth. I guess you're right there, Bumps. I wonder what I'd do if I got a lot of money. Why, you'd loan it to your uncle so he could go out on a big game expedition. <laughs> That's right. You're not fooling, I would. That's just what I'd do. Well, a boy, Jerry. <laughs> oh, hiya, Jason. Well, hello, Jason. Morning. Hello, Dan. Good morning, Jason. Well, now, uh, what's up? Why the long face? Boy, you look like you've just lost your last friend. You do yeah. look kind of sad. Hey, what's the matter? Oh, it's nothing. Oh, come on now. Don't try to fool us. You're not your cheerful self this fine morning. Uh, it's just one of those days, Bumps. Oh, say, did you hear about your girlfriend? <clears throat> I mean, uh, did you hear about Patsy having all that good luck? Yeah, I just heard about it from Bennett. Jim must be telling everybody in the circus. He's probably more excited than Patsy is. Well, you don't seem very happy about it, Jason. Oh, I'm happy for Patsy. Naturally, I would be. I think it's great. Oh, but sometimes money makes a... Oh, well, let's not talk about it. Uh, Jason, how are your animals? I haven't had a chance to get over and see them as yet. Well, fine, fine, Dan. I haven't got a bad cat in the lot. You wouldn't be in the market for a couple of rare Bengal tigers, would you? <laughs> <laughs> not this season, but I might next year. Why? Oh, Uncle Dan is taking orders, so if he goes to Africa, he can get you the animals you need. Figuring on going out for big game? Oh, uh, that's about all, Jason. Just figuring on. Oh, you'll get back in your stride again, Dan. Just takes time, that's all. I'd sure like to go with you, if you ever go back to Africa. You would, huh? Uh-huh. Well, Jerry, I don't think that would be the place for a boy. It's pretty strenuous, Jerry. Oh, I don't care. I bet I wouldn't be afraid. Takes more than just bravery. Takes strength and lots of it. You said something there, Bumps. It's no cinch plodding through swamps day after day, sometimes shoulder deep, then running out of fresh water and hoping to find more, then trekking across hot sands with the sun beating down until you think you can't stand it another hour. Is it that bad? And then some, Jerry. Oh, I don't care. I'd still like to go. Oh, oh well, there's a boy for you. <laughs> I don't blame you, Jerry. I think it'd be pretty exciting, too. Exciting and interesting. Especially watching those big wild animals being trapped and captured. I'll bet you'd pitch right in and help, wouldn't you? Sure I would. <laughs> well, sir, if I were going on a big game hunt, I'd take you along, Jerry. Really? Sure I would. With your enthusiasm, you should be valuable. Hey, now, wait a minute, Jason. You're not putting me on a spot, are you? <laughs> what do you mean, Dan? <laughs> Jerry won't take no for an answer after what you said. <laughs> well, when you get ready to sail away to Africa, you just put in two reservations. One for Jerry and the other for me. Whoopee, <laughs> we've got our reservations made. Oh, you'll have to get going now, Dan. You've got part of your crew together already. <laughs> kind of looks that way, doesn't it? Well, it's fun talking about it anyway. Well, that's right, Jerry. But as for me, I've done enough talking. I've got things to attend to. See you all later. So hey, long. Beth. Goodbye, Jason. Oh, so long, Jason. Jason. So long. <laughs> Say, you know, Dan, I've never seen Jason so glum. He's usually so cheerful. Yeah, he did seem as though something was bothering him. And did you notice how he looked when you talked about Patsy getting that money? Yeah, that's it. What's that? I'll Bump? bet a cookie to a donut that it's because Patsy's going to get that money. That's what's ailing him. Hmm. I should think he'd be very happy about it. Why, sure. He likes Patsy so much, he, he should be glad for her. Oh, he's most likely glad for her, but uh, he's thinking of himself. I don't believe I get you, Bob. Well, Jason is an odd fella. He's very independent, and he's a little headstrong. I think the thing that's worrying him is the fact that he doesn't want Patsy to think he's a fortune hunter. Oh, he ought to know Patsy better than that. Ah, uh, some fellas are funny that way, all right. Yeah, I'll venture to say that's what's the matter with him. He thinks if he keeps on showing attention to Patsy, she'll think he's after her money. No, oh, he's wrong if he thinks that. Patsy likes him too much. Hey, now, how come you know so much about Patsy and Jason? You're not playing Cupid by any chance. <laughs> no, but, well, anybody can see that. He always sends her flowers and treats her real nice and everything. <clears throat> well, I'd say you were very observant, Jerry. Well, it's foolish to talk about it. Patsy hasn't got the money yet, and to it might only turn out to be a couple of hundred dollars. Why, sure, it'll all work out. <laughs> oh, say, that reminds me, work. I've got to get to work, and right now. I didn't realize how much time we've spent here just talking. Well, what are you going to do? Oh, I've got to get busy and find some way of saving Mr. Randall some money. 
I told him I would find something around the lot that could be improved upon. Well, you've got a job on your hands, Dan. Just about everything around a circus has been improved upon for years. And I'm inclined to think things are running pretty smooth. He is, sir, just about letter perfect. <laughs> and you figure the same as Mr. Randall does, huh, Bumps? But nevertheless, I'm going to try. Oh, efficiency expert Dan Dugan. <laughs> yep, that's me. You know, Mr. Randall promised me a new suit of clothes for everything I brought to his attention that would save the circus money. That you're worth trying for. I'll say it is, Jerry, especially the way I need clothes right now. I could do with a new suit of clothes. Ooh, I've got an idea you can look into. Or might be something to it. What's that, Bum? Well, yeah, no, it just came to my mind, Dan. I heard some time back that Jack Hastings, uh, that's a publicity man. Yeah, 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 I know. Well, sir, it seems that Jack Hastings has been having some trouble with the passes that we give out for the use of window space in stores. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, for advertising. Yeah. See, I didn't know they gave away passes for oh, that. Oh, sure thing, Jerry. Every time you see one of those window cards in a store window, you can bet whoever owns that store or is in charge got a couple of general admission tickets to the show. Well... What's the trouble, boss? Well, it seems that they give out quite a few passes. And, well, the folks that have got them, they get down to the circus early and they get in. And then there's often a lot of cash customers that can't get seats. Mm. I, I see what you mean. Yeah, that is bad. And uh, Mr. Randall's losing money there, all right. Well, now, there's something for you to work on. <laughs> Maybe you can figure out some kind of a system to take care of that situation. Oh, well, that ought to be easy, Uncle Dan. Well, I'm not so sure about that, Jerry. But if it was so simple, it would have been remedied long ago. Oh, of course, it's only fair that folks should get the passes to the show for the use of their windows, and, and it's good advertising for us. Yes, it is, Bumps. It's a good idea. I guess every circus in the business has been using that system for years. But I don't see why folks that want to buy tickets should be turned down, though. Well, just because the folks that got in free took up all the seats. Well, that's the problem, Jerry. And your Uncle Dan is going to get to work on it right away. Thanks, Bumps, very much for giving me the tip. Oh, I'm glad to do it, Dan. <laughs> and I hope you figure out something, too. <laughs> if you can figure out a way that the cash customers won't be turned down and still the folks with passes won't lose out either, then you'll have it solved. It's just as easy as that, eh, Jerry? No, I mean, <laughs> well, that's what you have to do. Yes, that's the trick. And then you'll get the new suit of clothes. Oh, see, uh, how about making the passes just good for the matinee? Oh, now let's see. No, no, Bumps, I don't think that would be so good. It really wouldn't be fair. Oh, well, why not? The show's the very same whether it's a matinee or at night. Sure, but they'll see the same show, but folks that work in, in stores, you know, they can't get away during the day to see the show. Mm -hmm, that's right, Dan. Didn't look at it that way. You sure think of everything. Well, I hope you're right, Jerry. I hope I can think of some way of overcoming this little bit of trouble. I've got to show Mr. Randall that I'm going to be of some value to him. Well, here's wishing you luck. Yep, good luck to you, Dan. <laughs>